ladies, if you're in need of a role model and a prime example of just how much one woman can accomplish in a lifetime, look no further than my personal celebrity obsession, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg! Ooh, 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 ooh. You can't spell truth without Ruth. Oh. Why am I so obsessed with Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg? First of all, she nodded off during the most recent State of the Union address because, as she admitted, she had had a little bit too much wine beforehand. Her answer to the question, how many women on the Supreme Court is enough, is nine. She followed her passion into law, even though she greatly disappointed her family, who wanted her to be a teacher instead because that was a more acceptable role for a lady. At Harvard Law School, she was one of only nine women out of a class of 500, and in fact, she had to finish her law degree at Columbia University because Harvard Law didn't want to graduate her, even though she ended up at the top of her class. Also during law school, she managed to not only rock it at the top of her class, help her husband get through testicular cancer and law school, and also be a new mom. In the 1970s, as a professor and litigator, she argued some of the most important and foundational court cases regarding women's rights before the Supreme Court. And guess what? She won. Which leads me to my next badass fact. She is the most successful litigator on the Supreme Court bench. High five, Ruth. That was only my hand, I'm just pretending it was yours, in which case I actually would have been much gentler because you're pretty small. In 1970, the Notorious RBG co-founded the Women's Rights Law Reporter, which was the very first law journal in the United States devoted to looking at gender equality issues. Ginsburg also co-founded the Women's Rights Project with the ACLU to focus on issues of gender discrimination. She became the first tenured female professor at Columbia Law School. In 1974, she co-authored the very first textbook on sex discrimination law, which you might be thinking, who cares whether she wrote a textbook or not, to which I say it's actually really important because she wrote the first, meaning that it was taught, meaning that other people learned about the very important issues that is sex discrimination law. In 1993, Ruth Bader Ginsburg became the second woman ever appointed to the Supreme Court bench. In 1999 and 2009, while undergoing treatments for colon cancer and pancreatic cancer respectively, she never missed an oral argument. Yeah. More recently, her scathing dissents, often read from the bench, on cases involving things like voting rights, reproductive rights, and employment discrimination have been considered almost as important as the very Supreme Court justice decisions themselves. At 81 years old, she still pulls all-nighters. You wanna know why? Because she remains one of the court's most prolific justices ever. She keeps it real. You can't have it all at once, the notorious RBG said. Over my lifespan, I think I've had it all, but in different periods of times, things were rough. Her advice to young women is this. Don't take no for an answer. If it didn't work today, tomorrow is another day. Her excellent career advice. Work for things you're passionate about. Her relationship advice. When Marty and I were temporarily miffed at something one or the other of us said or did, I would take several breaths and remember that tempers momentarily aroused generally subside like a summer storm. Her advice on dealing with unpleasant people. Sometimes people say unkind or thoughtless things, and when they do, it's best to be a little hard of hearing. And her important observation about how she knew she really, really liked the guy who had become her husband. Marty was the first boy I knew who cared that I had a brain. Remember that, people. I don't care what body your brain is in. The roof, the roof is on fire. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. What would I do if I met, if I met Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I, um, uh, I don't know what I would say. I, I would probably just, um, I would do what I did when I met Barack Obama. Cause yeah, that happened and I would just uh, lose all my words and just say, thank you, uh, and collapse into